your Bible this morning, let's turn to the book of uh, 2 Chronicles, chapter number 7. 2 Chronicles, chapter number 7, verses 1 through 3 is what we'll be looking at this morning. Appreciate the choir sound this morning. And the 
said, I, and he said it because you, if you turn your back on me and turn the false idols, he said, I'll cast your church out of my sight. That's what he said in Satan Chronicles. And he said, I'll make your church a byword to other nations. That's in the scripture. That's what he said there. He said, I'll just make it a byword. In other words, it'll be nothing. It'll be a joke. It'll be a byword. In, in the community and among other nations. And I will say this this morning, Pine Ridge Baptist Church is the greatest church that I know of. And the reason I say that is because the glory of the Lord fills the house. And that's what makes it a great church. It's not because of me, because I'm your pastor. No, it ain't because of me, and it ain't on account of you. But I tell you what it is on account of, because of the Lord. Keeps moving in, and the Lord keeps touching and keeps blessing and helping the church. And that's why I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful for my church because the dwelling of God's presence is here. I mean, there's a continual presence of God, there's a consistent presence of God. And then the demonstration of God's power is here. There's a convicting power of God in this place. People get under conviction and come to the Lord and pray about it. Amen. And then there is a consecrated uh, a blessing here. There are power of God in this place. That means it's a blessed and sanctified power of God that's in this place. Yes. And then the declaration of God's principles, the reason I love our church, is God's Word is in the church message. And God's work is in the church ministry this morning. Yes. And this is why my church is so great. And that's why you can have, look at your neighbor and your friend in the eye and say, my church is a great church. is because the Lord comes there. Amen. God's presence is there. God's power is there. And God's principles are in our church. It's not about programs. It's not about puppets. It's not about personalities. It's not about the preachers. Amen. It's not about the people. But friend, it is about God. And God forbid we turn our back on God and, and turn our church uh, away from God. Because if we do, I believe God will remove His Spirit and He'll cast our church out of His sight and, and He will make our church nothing but a bad power. That's why we've got to pray and we've got to stay strong and we've got to stay close to God and His Holy Spirit moves in. And God's presence and power and principles add to our church attributes that makes this church different. So, I say again, I'm thankful for my church. I'm thankful for my church. Why am I thankful for my church? Or I could say, what's so great about my church? I will give you three or four things and I'll be done down the way. Number one, God's presence, God's power, God's principles make our church unique. Did you know we have a unique church this morning? It is a unique church this morning. I, I tell you, uh, why is it so unique? Because of the founder. First of all, because of the founder. The founder is the Savior. He's the head of the church. He's the heart of the church. Amen? Friend, let me tell you something. It ain't, like I said before, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about nobody but Him. Amen. And any church that don't make it about Him, they miss the whole point. It's not about my agenda, your agenda, or anybody else. It's all about Him. He's the head of the church, and it ought to be the heart of the church. Amen. Amen. Our heart that should be the heart of the Lord. And the Lord is the heart of the church, and the Lord is the head of the church. I'm not in charge here. He is. Amen. Thank God for it. None of our deacons are in charge here. He is this morning. Thank God for it. Christ is the head of the church, and He's the heart of the church. He's the founder. Uh, not only is our church unique because of the founder, our church is unique because of the foundation. The foundation is the stone. Amen. And the stone is the Lord. For he said, Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The stone is not only uh, the, uh, the foundation of our church, but the
the stone is living. It's 1 Peter 2, 4 through 5. I'll read it to you. He said, to whom coming as unto a living stone. This allowed indeed of men, the chosen of God and precious. It's talking about Jesus being a living stone. Amen. Ye also as lively stones. You see, when Jesus comes into your heart, into your life, He's a live stone. He comes in your heart. He makes you come alive. And He said here, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and a, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, if you don't have any saved people in your church, you won't have a spiritual church. You won't have a powerful church. And the Spirit of God will not move in the place. But I'm telling you, when God gets in you and gets in your life and gets real in your life and has a power in your life and you get on fire for God and you can't wait to get to church and you can't wait to just worship God and you're ready to worship God and you're ready to shout out and you're ready to cry and you're ready to do what God wants you to do. When the Lord moves on you, then you're alive. It's an uncommon fellowship. We 
we have an uncommon fellowship. When God is in the midst, there is fellowship that causes you to pray together. Hey Amen. Amen. We got an uncommon fellowship. I see people come to the altar, and I see these little ladies come, and some of the young ladies, and some men, and when the men go to the altar, you come and you pray together, and you pray for one another. I see you go to each other and say, pray for me concerning this, that, and other. I can't mention it just to anybody, but you're my friend, and you're in, I'm in fellowship with you, and you're my fellow member, and you're my fellow Christian, and I need you to pray about this. And you pray together, and then we come together and we praise together, amen. And then we have fun together by playing together, amen. And then we partner together, and sometimes we even picnic together. How about that? That makes our church uncommon. Matter of fact, we're going to picnic together just a little bit after service today. And I thank God for that. We need that. It's an uncommon fellowship. We have an uncommon friendship. We call on each other. Thank God for our church. We cry on each other. Amen. When we have a need in our life, we just don't know what to do. Thank God I got a whole church full of people I'm come to and cry on their shoulder and say, I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for my family. And I need you to pray about this and pray about that. We call on each other. We cry on each other. And we cut up with each other. Amen. I like that about our church. Amen. I'm glad we can have fellowship and we can cry out each other, but we can cut up with each other. We cut up with each other and we fellowship together. And listen here, you folks, I know some, they, they, they kind of was kind of standoffers. I understand that. But let me tell you something, you're missing out on some great fellowship if you don't participate in everything with the church. Amen. I'm telling you, when we, <coughs> excuse me, when we go out here in the fellowship hall, if you don't come over, you're missing out on some great fellowship. We cut, cut up together. If you don't go on the trips, you're missing out on some great fellowship. I'm telling you, friend, it's good to fellowship. And we cut up with each other. We have a good time with one another. It's an uncommon fellowship. It's an uncommon friendship. But we're also an uncommon family. Amen. I'm talking about our church. I'm talking about Pine Ridge. We have an uncommon family. We are family. Amen. We're God's family. We're children of the Lord. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And thank God for it. And we're close. And thank God for it every day. You know why we're an uncommon family? We get up here and we sing to Him. Amen. Did you know they say there ain't no any tighter harmony than, than family harmony? And thank God we sing together. Amen. We got that family harmony. I'm not talking about with vocal cords necessarily. I'm talking about with one spirit bearing witness to the other. Amen. Yeah. And we sing together like family. And we serve together like family. And then we <coughs> stick together like family. Amen. 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 I tell you, I, I thank God that the church sticks together. Amen. Amen. There ain't nobody trying to uh, go in a different direction or cause trouble or trials or anything like that. Thank God for it. We're sticking together. Yeah. And friend, you and I are the one that causes that with the Spirit of the Lord in us and with the Spirit of God leading us and guiding us. One mind, one accord. That's what the Bible said to do. And that means to stick yeah. together. And thank
so when you do that. I encourage you to do it more. And any time you feel like that on Sunday morning, I ain't got to preach. You can testify any time. You follow the Lord. We're united in our talents, in our testimony. And not only that, we're united in our tithes to express our love for God. That's right. I thank God for it. Amen. And we're united in the love for the laity. What that means, the lay people, our fellow believers. You see, we get, we're united in the love for our fellow believers, the laity. It's a big love. We, live, we love each other with a big love. Amen. We have a big love for every one another. Thank God for it. It's not only a big love, it's a believer's love. We love each other because Jesus' love lives within us. Amen. I'm telling you this morning, there ain't no way you can love your neighbor without Jesus. But if He's in your heart, and if you're saved today, you can love your neighbor this morning. You can love one another. Amen. Amen. It's a big love. It's a believer's love. It's also a brother, brotherly love. Romans 12 and 10 says, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Can I just make an announcement this morning and a confession at the same time? I want to tell the church something this morning. I want to tell you that I prefer you, my church, over any other church. Amen. I want you to know that. Did you know I'd rather be here than with some of my family members? That's the truth. Amen. I'd rather be here with you, fellowshipping with you, than some of my family members because they don't know God. Yeah. And they don't have nothing to talk about other than junk or the weather. But with you, we can fellowship together. We can pray together. We can talk about God together. And we can have a good time together. You're my family. Yeah. It's you I'm going to, yeah. to heaven with unless they get saved. It's you that we're going to be in heaven together with. I'm telling you, this morning I prefer you, my church. He said in honor, preferring one another. And I prefer you. I prefer being around you this morning. We're united in love for the laity, for the Lord. We're united in the love for the lost. First Thessalonians 3, 12 said, And the Lord, the Lord make you. The Lord make you do a lot of things, can you? Amen. He'll make you to increase and abound in love. Yes. His presence, His power, His principles make you increase and abound in love. Is what it's saying. Toward what? One another. See, it's God coming in your life that calls you to love your brother. And toward all men. Amen. You know why we love the lost? It's because Jesus is in our heart. Yes. I wouldn't care a thing about a lost person if it wasn't for the fact that Jesus came in my heart and what he did for me. I want to see him do it for them. Amen. And it makes me love all men. It makes me want to see all men get saved and get right. Amen. Even as we do towards you. We're united in the love for the lost, concerned for the souls, concerned for their salvation. And that's why I love my church. And I'm thankful for my church because we're united in the love of the Lord, the laity, and the lost. And that's what's so great about my church. It's unique. It's uncommon. It's united. It's also unselfish. I'm glad I'm in a church that's unselfish. <coughs> Amen. I mean, you're, you're unselfish to give to the ministry. Not only your tithes, but you give your time and you give your talent. And I thank God for it. Amen. This is the time of year uh, that we're going into when it really is a tax on your time and your talent. Because not only do you have 14 family get togethers to do, like we is in our family. It really is. And it's one year, James and Marguerite, they didn't have their Christmas until the second week of January. That's the truth. But see, there, 
during this time of year, you give your time and your talents. And how do you do that? You sacrifice. You, you're here. This, this is going to be a time when you can do that. We're going to have a Christmas play. We're going to need help in it. And it's the time to give your time and your talents. Amen. And you're unselfish with it. We've asked people this morning to help us in this thing. And several have said they will be willing to help and are going to help. And I thank God for it. But if you're going to commit to it, commit to it. Be faithful to it. Don't miss a practice. And if you possibly can, don't miss anything. Be there for it. And I know you will because you're unselfish this morning. Unselfish to give you time and your talent. Unselfish. To give to the Sunday school, to give to the services, to give to the sanctuary, to give to the shut-in. I tell you, I've seen this church help shut-ins more than any church I've ever seen. We make these, these ladies make these baskets, have their Sunday school classes, make baskets, send it to the shut-ins, making sure they got, making sure they get a bulletin, making sure they get a, a something from us to know that we still love them and care about them. Amen. Amen. Thank God we got an unselfish church that gives to the ministry, gives to this, and they also give to the sorrowful. Pine Ridge Church is always given to the sorrowful. What do you mean? I'm talking about those that are mourning and death. I've seen these ladies pick up a, a, a meal for an army in a matter of two days, seem like, or one day. And I thank God for it. Amen. This is an unselfish church. I'm telling you, you've got a unique thing here. You've got an uncommon thing here. The Lord has blessed you for your efforts. You're doing well, Pine Ridge. And I'm going to tell you that this morning. I appreciate you. Not selfish, giving church to the ministry, but you're also unselfish to give to the missionaries. You serve God by giving to missions, Amen. and you spread the gospel by giving to missions. Amen. I've seen y'all be faithful in giving to our missionary brother Bagwood and, and Matthew and uh, Carrie Bandy, uh, Bundy, whatever their name is, uh, Bandy, I believe it is. And others in our church. And when our preachers come, our, our evangelists and our, and our visiting preachers come, you give and you give and you help. And I want to tell you, I appreciate it this morning. Amen. I love everyone of you for it. Somebody said, Why do you love the church? I love my church and I'm thankful for my church because it's unselfish. To give to the ministry, to give to missions. And that's what's so great about the church. And finally, let me say, what's so great about my church? It's unsatisfying. Now, you might say that's a negative word. How did you come up with that? Let me tell you what you're unsatisfied about. It's unsatisfied unless it grows in God. Amen? That's the way I am. I believe that's what this church is. I believe this church wants to grow in God. Amen. And you're unsatisfied unless you do grow in God. This church longs to be fed by God. I see it in your faces. I see it in your heart. When I came here, and it's, uh, it's a year ago, along about this time that I started filling in, preaching, and so forth, I saw in your faces, in your hearts, hungry people want to be fed because. And I still see hungry people want to be fed the gospel. And I'm asking God to help me to feed you every week because something I'll help you. And the church longs to be fed because it's unsatisfied. You know what I like to see? Don't you like to see about a, a 14, 15 year old boy that just can't get full? I mean, they're like a bottomless pit. Now, I say that now because my boys ain't there. But when my boys get there, I may not be so happy about it when it's cost me a lot of money. But do you see that about a 14, 15 year old boy? I mean, they can eat a big old plate, a two or three plates, and it won't be 30 minutes, and they'll say, Mama, I'm hungry again. And friend, let me tell you something, that's the way I see our 
church. I, I feed you and, and you want to be fed and you eat it all up and you come back for more. And friend, let me tell you something. I'll keep feeding you as long as God provides and as long as you keep coming back for more, I'll keep you on feeding you this day. Some preachers and some people may look at us and say, well, they got 66 this morning, you've run 66, 75, somewhere in there. Hey, that church ought to be running more, it ought to be doing better and all this and that and other. I tell you, God got it just the way He wants it. And I'm satisfied with that. Amen. And Fred, if that's at all God wants us to have, as long as we got unity, as long as we got this unique thing, this unselfish thing, this uncommon thing, this unsatisfied thing, I'm happy with it. If that's what the Lord wants, thank God for it. As long as we got folks still hungry, I'll keep feeding the little flock God giving me to feed, and I'll feed you with everything I've got. church longs to be fed, but also the church longs to be filled with God. I see folks in this church that wants the Spirit of God to move, that wants to see God do mighty things in the church. I thank God for it. It's unsatisfied unless it grows in God. It's unsatisfied unless we grow in grace. Let me ask you something. Do you want to learn more about God's grace? Do you want to, do you want to live more in God's grace? I see it in your faces. I see it in your heart. Unsatisfied unless we grow in grace. And then, I believe this church is unsatisfied unless we grow in groups. Amen. I believe this church wants to see the church grow and do well. And that's what I love about you this morning. This is what we got to do. We got to ask God to send people as He sees fit. We gotta ask God to save people as He sees fit. And we gotta ask God to sanctify people as He sees fit. Amen. And then we gotta ask God to stick people as He sees fit. We mean stick people. We're gonna get needles out and stick them through flu shots. No. I'm talking about stick them in the church as He sees fit. Make them members. Make them a part of the church as He sees fit. You know God's in control of all that. I'm just going to put it in His hands. Let Him have His way the way He wants. I love my church and I'm thankful for my church. Because I still believe you are a church that is unsatisfied unless you see, unless you grow in God, grow in grace, and grow in groups. That's what's so great about my church. How many believe you got the greatest church in all the world? Amen. I certainly do. I want to ask you this morning. How many are members this morning? Amen. All over the church. Raise your hand. Members this morning. Is your name just listed on the roll? Or do you as a member meet the description of the church that I just described? Most of you do. Most of you do. But I'm afraid to say some members just don't. Some not here today that don't. Some not here today that do. They just can't be here. I want to ask you a few questions as I get a song ready. Are you one of the church members that is unique because God's presence, God's power, God's principles are in your life? Are you one of the church members that is uncommon? Please take these questions to heart. Because you fellowship. Because you have godly friendship and you make yourself a part of the family of God. Are you one of the church members that is united in love with the Lord, with the lay people, and for the lost? Are you one of the church members that is unselfish in giving to the ministry and in giving to missions? And missionaries. Are you one of the church members that is unsatisfied unless you grow in God? Unless you grow in grace? Unless the church grows in groups? If you're not this kind of church member, I've got good news for you. You can be. You can be that kind of church member. 
I've got the greatest church in all the world, and I love you, and I'm thankful for you. We also see a few members around here that need to get closer to the Lord and participate in being the type of church member that I just described. Are you a member that needs to come and draw closer to God and to the church? Are you that member? I, I will read my poem one more time as they come to the song. I'm done. What's so great about my church? It's a shining church like a city on a hill. It's a serving church that lends a hand and follows God's will. It's a scriptural church that stands on God's word. It's a separated church. Not liberal, nor legalistic, in case you haven't heard it. It's a spiritual church. Praise of the Lord while some sing, some pray, and others cry and shout. And pray to God it's a secure church. Build a pop rock. One day soon she's going to leave out. Amen.